Hello and welcome to the next tutorial in JavaScript. Now this will be a rather short tutorial. We're only going to cover the set interval and set timeout methods as well as how to create an external JavaScript file. Now what's really nice about this is that the we're going to be going on to a mini series on objects. So enjoy yourself while you can because this will be the last easy tutorial. Well, no, there it's easy all the way down. Don't worry about it. I'm I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, let's start. So the set interval and the set timeout methods, what they allow you to do is control how much time passes before a function executes. So let's figure out how to do this. So I'm just going to create a function. I'll call it example. And what should we have it do? Create a simple alert box. Now within the quotes, I'll have it say, sorry for the delay. Now let's start out with the set timeout first. So all you do is just type in set timeout. Make sure the T is capitalized. And first of all, type in the name of the function as the first piece of data that goes between your parentheses without the parentheses so you don't have uh, these parentheses right next to the name followed by how many milliseconds passes before it executes so in case you don't remember milli is a prefix not a prefix what is a prefix it's a uh, a unit uh, well no no it's not a unit it's just a prefix uh, that represents one over one thousand or just one one thousand so 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So I'll make it three seconds. So I'll click save and refresh the page. And there it is. Sorry for the delay. Another way you can refer to the function is to actually put the parentheses, excuse me, yeah, the parentheses there, but you also, ha also have to have quotes about the function name. So if I save and then refresh the page again, and there it is. So it still works. Now the set interval, I don't, I can't really show you a good example with this because we don't know other kind of stuff like um, picture animation and whatnot. So I can't really do anything for real with this yet. But very self-explanatory. The difference is, is it will keep executing these after this amount of time it'll keep executing this then that amount of time execute back and forth back and forth so uh... i don't know if it works for alert boxes i i doubt it but this would be good this is a, something that's used for like if you're keeping track of how much time is left on an online test for an example um, or if you're controlling a picture animation moving across the screen or something like that uh, th this is what you would use but uh, I. I will have the, those kind of examples in a project video later, uh, but in this tutorial there isn't really anything I can do. So here's the box, and then if you click OK, boom, another one comes up. And I believe if you wait a while, these alert boxes will stack on each other. So if I just wait a moment, then if I press OK, as you can see there's another one, I press OK again. Oh, and another one, so that means nine seconds just passed. Oh, there's another one, so got quite a few, so let me uh, stop this. And then I'll just simply refresh the page. And it should only pop up once now. And there we go. And that's about it for the set interval and the set timeout. I'm sorry, I can't really show you a good example for the for the interval, but you will I will show you one in a project video so let's figure out how to create a sample uh, JavaScript file whoops didn't want that to be there so all you do is uh, just like with your um, creating a CSS cascading style sheet uh, everything that goes between your script tags just like before it was your style tags will then uh, be created in your JavaScript file so you just create a new one there and basically just copy everything. I'll cut it instead so you can see that it's not using it here so I'll save and then I'll paste everything in there 
and then you'll save this as a JavaScript file. So I'll call it example and then .js. So as you can see, JavaScript.js. And then I'll click Save. And I can see it's a JavaScript file. Now, in order to link these files, you won't use a link tag. Instead, and I recommend doing this in your header file, you'll create a, a pair of script tags, basically. And on this, in this tag, what you'll do is you'll create an h, or excuse me, a source. And as the source will be the name of your JavaScript file. So it's just example.js. If you're doing it like me, then you have to make sure this file is in the same folder as your HTML file. So I'll click Save, and when I refresh the page, oh, and there it is. And as you can see, you can also do other things. So I'll just I'll just get rid of all of this. You can just simply type in something as uh, simple as "Hello World." Refresh the page, and then there it is. So you can do all your stuff here. You can define you can define all your functions here. Uh, when you learn about them, your objects and arrays, uh, preloaded images. Uh, all that kind of stuff and you can just like your CSS files have them all here and of course this is very useful if you're applying uh, similar features to multiple pages but then again since different pages will most likely have their own scripts uh, the b the bigger use for this is just if you have so much script just to have it organized in a separate file as opposed to embedded with your HTML file so of course you also don't need these either, as long as you. I, I'll just delete them just so you can see. Actually, I'll copy it just to make sure. So I can put it back when I'm done with this. And when I refresh the page, "Hello World" still stays. So um, and yeah, you can declare variables and do all your math here. Um, just a bunch of stuff. So uh, that's it for this tutorial, and I hope this was enlightening. And uh, trust me, the set interval will definitely be helpful later. Uh, and I'll see you next time, and we will start on objects.